Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has called for an embargo on Iranian oil, saying sanctions on Iran must be intensified due to the country's nuclear ambitions. As a tense standoff between Tehran and Washington continues, the Islamic Republic warns it will block the Strait of Hormuz, a vital world fuel supply route, if its national security is threatened. A move the U.S. says could lead to military action. For more on this, we are now joined by New uh, from New York by Caleb Maupin from the the International Action Center and Anti-War Group. Thank you for joining us. Now, if you don't mind, let's start off with Iran. It's been under international sanctions for years and Western countries are still calling for more. But what effect can these new measures possibly have? These new measures against Iran are just part of a continued repression of the Iranian people, punishing them for the fact that in 1979 they rose up, they overthrew the U.S.-backed Shah, U.S.-backed dictator, and they took the oil for themselves. The U.S. has never forgiven them for that, and they continue to seek to isolate and threaten Iran. And that's why I'm excited about the February 4th National Day of Action coming up, when people all throughout the United States are going to take to the streets against these sanctions, these, these, these assassinations of nuclear scientists, and, and these threats of war, because the Iranian people have the right to control their own oil resources. That's what this war is, these threats of war and this continued isolation is really about. It has nothing to do with fear of nuclear weapons. All right, moving back to the sanctions, though, if the EU does impose a new embargo and the Strait of Hormuz is shut down by Iran, what global economic impact could that have uh, around the world? Well, we saw what the sanctions on Iraq did in the lead up to the Iraq war and the invasion. And they, they resulted in thousands and, and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of deaths of innocent Iraqi children that starved to death. You know, this is the 1%. I, I'm proud to be part of the Occupy Wall Street movement right here in, in, in New York City. And, I, and, and this is the 1% of the world, the, the ruling elite, the people who own the banks, the factories, the oil wells, and all of that. And just like they're waging war on working people here in the United States, they're waging war against the Iranian people. They're waging war against people all over the world who want to stand up against them. And that's why I am so excited about the upsurge going on. My enemies aren't in Iran. My enemies aren't in Africa or in Asia. My enemies are right Right here in New York City on Wall Street. It's the banker elite that runs this country and it's time we stand up against them. So any threat of war against Iran must be strongly opposed. Any continued efforts to isolate them, it can only hurt the people of the world and it can only benefit the ruling elite. Now you mentioned that uh, the war in Iraq and also we know that tension is rising all the time in the standoff between the U.S. and Iran. Is this just saber, saber rattling between the two or is Washington really prepared and really ready for military action in the region now that the Iraq campaign is over? I think that the 1% and the ruling elite in this country are, are very nervous because they realize that there's nothing they can do to save their system. The capitalist system on a global scale is in a state of collapse. And so in desperation, in desperation, they're trying to find some strategy to fix their system. And it may be that they'll be deluded into thinking they can save their system by starting a bloody war with the Iranian people and, and committing a crime against the people of Iran. And if that's the case, that's an outrage. And, and we, need to, we need to turn this, what would be a war of international aggression into a civil war against this ruling elite and start fighting against the ruling elite here in our own country. I would refuse to quote, fight in Iran. And I think there's millions of youth that would refuse to do so as well. So now, do you think that the U.S. is really gearing up for regime change in Iran? What are their motivations? Where could this all lead? Well, like I said, the, the motivation for the U.S. to continue repressing the Iranian people, to assassinate nuclear scientists, it has nothing to do with any love of democracy. It has everything to do with the fact that the Iranian people rose up in 1979 and took control of the oil resources. And they have never, ever forgiven them for that. And the U.S. has never wanted to tolerate the fact that the Iranian people and not uh, Shell Oil and not, uh, and not Texaco control the oil resources in Iran. And they've never wanted to forgive them for that. And so these continued saber-rattling, these continued threats, 
who knows when it'll come? You know, it, it may not come. Perhaps the resistance of the people will be too strong and they won't. But I don't know. But any threats of wars must be strongly opposed because these kind of wars serve the ruling elite, they serve the Wall Street bankers, and they don't serve working class people. There are millions and millions of unemployed people in this country. If they cut the military budget, they could put people to work. There could be jobs, but there's not jobs. There's war. There's continued threats of war. And that's why February 4th is going to be a great day in the U.S. where the people say, our enemies aren't here in the United States, or our enemies aren't in Iran. They're here in the United States, in the halls of power, in Congress, and on Wall Street. All right. Thank you very much, Caleb Maupin from the International Action Center and Anti-War Group. Thanks for joining us.